tremendous amount of energy that's going into this project where people get so excited on a day-to-day -day basis, not only because we're the scope and the size of it, but also because we're, we're crafting a new IP. The opportunity to design a fantasy world, an entirely new fantasy world, is really something I think not a lot of people in this business get to do. We didn't want this just to be another generic fantasy world. We wanted, really wanted to, to sing and, and show something that people hadn't seen before. One of the goals of the team has been to specifically say, oh, that's, that's Reckoning. You know, we really wanted to have a signature style that, that was recognizable um, and that was carried through through all the different elements of it. It's not just about making great looking sword, for example. Like, it's got to be a sword that looks like it fits in the universe, but also works with these armor sets, that also works with these effects, that also feels like it's got some age and wear. Uh, and the beauty of it is that we've got all this fantastic material to draw from, from the lore that's been written and from the narrative designers so that we can say, okay, this sword is not just a sword, but the glyphs on the sword actually mean something and they're part of a language that was built. And the materials, if there's a gem in there, well, why is the color of that gem matter? It does, and a lot of games it's, it's not as deeply considered. We knew early on we really wanted a game that was colorful and lush. We felt that that was something that was really neat about our game. It set our game apart from other games in this genre. It fit right in line with um, uh, R.A. Salvatore's line about, you know, when you ask someone to save the world, you want to give them a world worth saving. We really wanted it to have that dark storybook kind of sensibility to it, um, so that it wasn't trying to recreate reality. There was one piece that, that I did where it's sort of this large half snake fish lady uh, attacking a hero and she's surrounded by these smaller kind of fish man soldiers and they're in the swamp and when you look at it you, you, you can kind of tell okay there's a story here and I want to know more about these creatures and these characters and, and what the environment is that they're in. There's two di different directions that people generally take. You either try to really try to make it photo real uh, or they try to design it, like design every element and we went the second path. So the role of a concept artist is basically to take the initial ideas that come either out of brainstorming meetings or um, from designer documents, sort of visualize them in, in 2D. Uh, a lot of times it's, it can be a lot more schematical where uh, we're literally doing drawings of characters from different angles so that the, the modelers can, can take those and do sort of a one-to-one -one translation. And other times it's really just sort of a, um, a way to inspire the team and uh, they're more of like look and feel type pieces. As an art director, a lot of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is working and interfacing with, with not only the artists on the team, but also the designers and the engineers, and making sure that everything comes together as one cohesive piece. We really try to focus on making sure that when we're creating a piece of concept art, that it serves the goals and that, that it's sort of speaking to the process, as well as being a great image, right? And so we have to remember that not only are we making uh, great looking images, but there has to be solid design behind it. A lot of it is trying to service the needs of the overall art in the project, but then also really taking a look at the design and what the narrative needs are, what the gameplay needs are at any particular point, and then also keeping in mind the technical considerations and constraints of actually producing a game that we can put on a box that people can play. Not only do words tell the story of, of Amalur and the story of Reckoning, but, but the but the visuals tell stories. Specifically, we'll do things like stained glass windows that, that, that tell a story or fable that's told by generations of the Fae, uh, or come into a dungeon, an ancient dungeon ruin. Uh, we leave clues as to you know, who used to live in that, that place and why did things go bad and you know, why, why is it now in ruins. We don't want to just sort of say, oh, it's just ruins, let's just make some crumbled rocks. We try to leave little visual clues of, of you know, what came before and, and how did things get the way they are. There's so much material in this project, it's hard for people to understand that are on the outside of this to, to really get a sense of like how many creatures we have in the game, how many armor sets, uh, how many different places in the game that you can physically go to. Um, some of the times we talk about this, it's like someone laying out an entire state, you know, like road by road, signpost by signpost, and making sure that all of it feels filled in and cool and cohesive and all put together. We don't want to just go, okay, you know, everybody knows what a troll looks like. We really want to think about the creature and the design of it from the ground up. One of the things that typically is, is difficult about putting large creatures into um, a, a game, you don't want it to look like you're just sort of hacking at their knees. We really wanted to bring the most important or most interesting part of the troll, which is his big massive head, down closer to your level. So he's this really, he's this sort of this hulking beast 
uh, who's uh, stooped over and he's got this really long, um, sort of massive looking jaw that, that just swoops down uh, towards the player and has this really aggressive look to it. And the bulgan, which are these big red uh, heavy set creatures are just is so well executed from you know the initial design to that document talking about what their backstory and their lore was to the models to the animation. I feel like he's he's so unique and, and yet at the same time there are elements of things that we're familiar with and, and so we know exactly what the Bolgan is when we see him. It makes you think of things that you're familiar with but at the same time it challenges you know your preconceived notions of what fantasy is and should be and it takes you to a completely different world. A lot of uh, games and movies today, you know, very little is left to the imagination of the viewer. And while, you know, there's a lot of really fun and exciting and amazing things in the world of Reckoning, we also want to leave them with this hint that, that it's all part of an even more massive and, 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 and compelling world. One of the things that's been said a lot, you know, that there's this 10,000 year history that RA has developed, it really is there. And if you go through and you play the game and you see all the individual bits and pieces and you start to talk to the individual uh, NPCs in the game and read the books that are there, you start to realize like, wow, they really did try to reference all that stuff. It, it really is in there to find. While we may not tell everybody everything, it makes people have questions in their mind uh, and say, well, what is this world about? And what's the bigger story? And what else is going on here? Everything was considered. And I hope they, they walk away with that.